You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain continues to adopt initiatives, projects and agreements that preserve the environment and natural life that protect humans and achieve sustainable development goals in addition to enhancing all national and world efforts. Marking the World Environment Day under the slogan, We Only Have One Land, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad stressed that environmental issues are receiving the attention and support of His Majesty the King based on His Majesty's insightful visions and future strategy as embodied in His Majesty's directives to ratifying Law No. 7 of 2022, which marks the start of a new work phase in the field of environmental preservation in the Kingdom. This law keeps pace with developments in environmental issues locally, regionally and globally and is in line with the agreements signed by the Kingdom in all areas related to the environment, climate and diversity, assisting Bahrain to move towards further progress and success. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad noted that efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his continuous follow-up to directly support unified efforts that contribute to the preservation of the environment and climate and achieve sustainable development goals. These efforts helped in creating projects and programs in the government's work program and defined the set of goals that Bahrain has been committed to through the climate and environmental agreements it signed with many international organizations and parties specialized in the field of environment and climate preservation. Thus, the Kingdom gained a good reputation and distinguished attendance through its participation and presiding over many international positions and international conferences and forums in this regard. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad affirmed that the efforts made by Bahrain, represented by the Supreme Council for the Environment and with the contribution and cooperation of local companies, institutions and factories, have set ambitious plans to reach a 30% reduction in emissions by 2035 and doubling the number of afforestation in green areas as well as the goals of renewable energy and targeting zero neutrality in 2060, in addition to reducing methane emissions. His Highness also noted that these goals will enhance efforts aimed at preserving the soil around which the slow resolves or rather revolves this year, especially the land, sea and air environment is united by physical links and positive relationships which affect each other. So whenever a part of the environment improves, it positively affects the rest of the environment components in general. His Honor Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad pointed out that the Kingdom has taken many legislative measures to guarantee the protection of the land as His Majesty ratified Law No. 5 of 2021 regarding the regulation and control of international trade and endangered species of animal groups and plants in Law No. 30 of 2021, approving Bahrain's accession to the Convention for the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. On this occasion, His Highness also praised the awareness of environmental challenges that citizens and residents in the Kingdom have and their belief in the importance of cooperation between the various components of society to ensure environmental and climate security for future generations. His Highness called on all sectors and institutions of civil society and citizens for further cooperation, shared partnership and social responsibility by supporting environmental and climate initiatives, programs and activities implemented by the Supreme Council for the Environment for a better future. The Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Assam bin Abdullah Khalaf, affirmed the keenness to provide all municipal services that meet the needs of citizens and residents with the highest levels of efficiency, quality and speed, while ensuring its sustainability in line with the pace of development and progress and supporting the goals of the comprehensive development process of His Majesty the King. Khalaf expressed his deep thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for honoring the Northern Region Municipality with the victory of customer service centers in Ali, Hamad Town and Budaya and the Southern Region Municipality in Rafah with the Golden Shield for Government Service Centers, Taqim 2021. Khalaf noted that the honoring is a great incentive to work towards further developing government services. The Minister of Housing Engineer Basim bin Ya'goub al Hamar held an extensive work meeting with a number of ministry officials to discuss the latest developments in the administrative and service system development program. During the meeting, the minister stressed the importance on working on implementing the service and administrative development program in the ministry, directing the need to apply government standards for evaluating service centers and adopting them as a methodology to achieve the program's goals. The Minister of Housing praised the Government Service Centers Evaluation Award, which comes within the framework of the government initiatives headed by His Royal Highness. Crown Prince and Prime Minister to develop government performance. The Minister commended the efforts of the members of the team in charge of implementing the Electronic Transformation Plan, which was 100% completed in most of its axes. 
Youth and Sports Affairs Minister Ayman bin Tawfiq al muayyad chaired the meeting of the Board of Directors of the Hope Fund to support youth projects and initiatives. During the meeting held virtually, the minister commended the tremendous efforts exerted by the board members to achieve the goals of Hope Fund regarding the provision of the necessary support for distinguished youth initiatives, praising the positive results of the fund's initiatives and programs, which he said have contributed to increasing youth investments. The panel discussed the report that the Board of Directors will submit to His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. It also approved the appointment of Fatma Al Ahmadi as its secretary. It was also informed about the work atmosphere at Hope Fund and reviewed the fund's projects for the first quarter, as well as its plans and programs for this year. The Board of Directors also discussed the progress of the implementation of the Talents Program and the results achieved so far. Concluding the meeting, Youth Minister and Board of Directors Chairman of Hope Fund stressed the need to continue hand or rather hard work in order to ensure the success of the initiatives launched by the Fund for Young Entrepreneurs, calling for providing the necessary support for youth entrepreneurs so to be able to develop their enterprises. The Economic Recovery Forum will start tomorrow with the participation of a number of officials from various government and private agencies. The forum aims to achieve its aspirations in the Economic Recovery Plan and enhance financial stability by introducing initiatives for comprehensive economic development. To support Bahrain's efforts in achieving its aspirations in the Economic Recovery Plan and enhancing financial stability by introducing initiatives for comprehensive economic development, the Economic Recovery Forum is organized by the Shura Council and in cooperation with the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, the BIB and the support of the National Bank of Bahrain with the participation of a number of ministers and officials from various government and private agencies. The establishment of the forum comes with the launch of the Economic Recovery Plan, which came to achieve the visions of His Majesty the King and was announced by the cabinet headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and included a number of initiatives aimed at developing the economy and creating opportunities for citizens. The forum will highlight the role of the legislative authority in supporting the achievement of the goals and priorities of the Economic Recovery Plan and ensuring that it keeps pace with the requirements of sustainable development in addition to the most important aspects that need to be developed to maintain an effective and appropriate legislative framework that suits the various aspects of the Economic Recovery Plan. The forum will discuss four main axes based on the priorities identified in the Economic Recovery Plan which include human capital development in addition to facilitating procedures and developing legislation and strategic projects as well as financial sustainability and economic stability. Information and e-government authority chief executive Mohammed Ali Al Qaid held a series of high-level meetings with international experts and senior GCC officials in parallel with the World Summit on the Information Society WSIS Forum 2022, which was held from the 30th of May to the 3rd of June. Al Qaid met with UAE Telecommunications and Digital Government Regulatory Authority TDRA Director General Mr. Majid Al Mismar and his accompanying delegation. They discussed successful initiatives by the two nations and opportunities to enhance cooperation in ICT and digital transformation. Al Qaeda also met with Saudi Digital Government Authority Vice Governor Dr. Abdullah Al Fafi, where they discussed initiatives by the two countries to accelerate digital transformation across all sectors. The meeting covered the two nations' adoption of technology and its role in maintaining continuity during the pandemic. Al Qaeda said that Bahrain and Saudi Arabia are set to continue their cooperation in this field. Al Qaeda held a series of meetings with representatives from international organizations, including the Director of Telecommunications Standardization Bureau from the International Telecommunication Union. Secretary Secretary General of Telecommunications and Posts. At these meetings, Al Qaed explored opportunities to enhance strategic partnerships in digital transformation, advance global and regional digital policies, and improve service efficiency. Al Qaed showcased Bahrain's digital policy initiatives, highlighting procedures introduced to regulate digital transformation across government entities, streamline e services, and support creativity. Al Qaed said that the meetings are in line with the Kingdom's commitment to enhance cooperation with international organizations in the areas of ICT, digitization, and digital services, and gain exposure to similar international initiatives. The heads of Arab councils and parliaments praised the Kingdom of Bahrain's comprehensive renaissance under the leadership of His Majesty the King, which has enhanced its effective presence in various fields at the regional and international levels. They also lauded His Majesty the King's support for joint Arab action that achieves the interests of countries and preserves their security and stability, in addition to balanced foreign policy of His Majesty that has been put Bahrain on the global map, which was reflected by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in terms of effective policies and programs. This came at the conclusion of 
of the conference to launch the document for the development of education in the Arab world, organized by the Arab Parliament with the participation of a number of Arab, regional and international organizations and hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The president of the Moroccan Center for Tolerance and Interfaith Dialogue, Mohamed Abedo, has praised the initiatives launched by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to consolidate the culture of tolerance and peaceful coexistence, promote religious freedoms and interfaith dialogue, and spread the values of peace, fraternity, and solidarity among all. He made the statements while receiving the ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Morocco and Dean of the Arab Diplomatic Corps, Khalid bin Salman al Salam. The ambassador praised the efforts of the Moroccan Center to spread the values of peace, religious tolerance, and moderation, as well as reject violence, fanaticism, and extremism. He also wished the Kingdom of Morocco further progress and prosperity. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia today welcomed its first batch of foreign Hajj pilgrims since before the coronavirus pandemic, which prompted authorities to sharply restrict the annual ritual in line with global health guidelines. The group from Indonesia landed in the city of Medina and were set to travel south to the holy city of Mecca in the coming weeks to prepare for the Hajj next month. Usually about 2.5 million people participate in the pilgrimage, but after the onset of the pandemic in 2020, authorities announced they would only let 1,000 pilgrims take part. The following year, they increased the total to 60,000 fully vaccinated Saudi citizens and residents chosen through a lottery. In April, the kingdom announced it would permit 1 million Muslims from inside and outside the country to participate in this year's Hajj, which will take place in July. An earthquake of magnitude 5 struck Kuwait, according to the Ministry of Information today. The ministry said that Kuwait's National Seismic Network recorded an earthquake measuring 5 on the Rechter scale southwest of Al-Ahmadi, and it occurred at approximately 4.28 a.m. Kuwait time at a depth of 5 kilometers. The Kuwait's fire force said that there was no damage as a result of the earthquake. Amman has made new oil discoveries that will raise its production by 50,000 to 100,000 barrels in the coming two to three years. Amman's Energy and Minerals Minister, Mohammed bin Hamad al Rumhi, said crude oil reserves in the Sultanate currently stand at 5.2 billion barrels and gas reserves at around 24 trillion cubic feet. Exports to China, the biggest buyer of Amman's crude, accounted for around 78% of the Sultanate's total oil exports during the first four months of this year. The Sultanate's total oil production in the first four months of 2022 grew by 9.2% to 124.8 million barrels compared to 114.3 million in the same period of 2021.